Pennsylvania, the law directs the court to consider 17 different factors. In general, the factors take into account the following issues. First, the child's physical, intellectual, moral, and spiritual well-being. Judges are interested in assuring the stability of your child's education, their family life, and community life, as well as their ongoing contact with siblings, the other parent, and extended family members. The court will consider the ability and willingness of the parents to cooperate with one another and support ongoing contact with the other parent. The judge will want to know how close the parents are living to one another and the availability of each parent to care for the child and make appropriate child care arrangements when necessary. Which parent has been the primary caretaker and which parent is best able to provide a loving, stable environment for the child? The court will also consider evidence of a history of drug or alcohol abuse for either parent as well as the people who live in that parent's household. The judge will also want to know about the mental or physical condition of the parents and those with whom they are living. The judge may hear about the child's preference. However, the amount of weight the judge places on the child's preference depends on the child's age and maturity. Finally, the court will consider the parent's ability to provide stability in the child's life and meet the child's basic needs. However, a party's income is generally not a factor as long as the parent with the lower income can provide stability and meet the child's basic needs. Keep in mind that a primary concern of the court is the safety of your child. The law directs the judge to give weighted consideration to any facts that affect the safety of the child, such as the present and past abuse committed by a parent or a member of the parent's household, whether there is a continued risk of harm to the child or parent, and which party can better provide adequate physical safeguards and supervision of the child. The judge will also take into account the criminal record of the parents or their household members and any involvement with the child protective services or general protective services in the county where a child has lived. The judge will consider the attempts of a parent to turn the child against the other parent, except in cases of domestic violence where reasonable safety measures are necessary to protect the child from harm. And finally, the court will consider the level of conflict between the parents and the parents' willingness and ability to cooperate with one another. A party's efforts to protect a child from abuse is not evidence of unwillingness or inability to cooperate with the other parent. There are a lot of facts to keep in mind when preparing for a custody hearing. It may be helpful to keep your focus on what situation best gives your child the opportunity to live safely and fulfill his or her potential physically, emotionally, and academically. Opportunities to build relationships with each parent, as well as with other caring adults, siblings, and extended family members create an ideal situation. You know your child best, and it is up to you to make sure that the court is aware of any relevant factors that will help the judge to make the best decision possible for your child. You may be thinking about moving with your children, and whether you're moving across the street, down the block, to another county, or even to another state or country, you need to know about Pennsylvania's child custody law. The child custody law has certain steps that you must follow to move with your children. If you do not follow the steps, you could get into trouble with the court, and you may even lose your children to the other parent. It may be extremely helpful to talk to an attorney about your interest in moving and find out how the law may affect your plans. First, it's important to understand what the law means by the term relocation. Relocation means a change in residence of the child which significantly interferes with the ability of the parent who is not relocating to exercise his or her custodial rights. Even a short distance may be a relocation. For example, a judge may find that moving to another school district is a relocation. 
Some judges may find that moving to a nearby town or a city is a relocation. And moving to another county or state is almost certainly going to be considered a relocation in the eyes of the court. In order to relocate with your child, you will need the child's other parent or any other person who has custody rights to the child to agree to your relocation, or you will need the judge to approve your move. The first thing you must do if you want to relocate is to fill out a form called a notice. You will fill out your portion of the form and then send it to the other parent. There are several things that could happen when the other parent receives your notice. It's possible that the other parent will have no objection to you moving or changing your current custody arrangement and will send you the form saying that. Or the other parent may not have a problem with you moving but does not want to change an existing custody arrangement and will mail you the form saying that. Of course, it is possible that the other parent will not want you to move with your child and will return the form to you saying that. And it is also possible that the other parent will not return the form to you at all. If the other parent doesn't reply to your notice, the court will assume that the other parent doesn't have a problem with you moving with your child. You will still have other papers to complete and give to the judge to get your approval to move. If the other parent doesn't want you to move or doesn't want to change the custody order, you will have a hearing in front of a judge before you can move. At that hearing, the judge will look at many things that help the judge to decide what is in the best interest of your child. You will want to tell your judge why you want to move and how it will improve the quality of life for yourself and also for your child. For example, you may want to move to be closer to supportive family members or to start a better paying job or to continue your education. The judge will want to know about other things that will help the judge to understand why allowing you to move to another location with your child would be good for your child. You may want to tell the judge about your child's relationship with important people, including both you and the other parent. The judge will also want to understand the relationship your child has to other people, like brothers and sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins, grandparents, and so on. It will be important for the court to know about these relationships, where these people live, and how long your child has had a relationship with them. The court will want to know about the impact the move will likely have on your child, considering your child's age and stage of development. Any special needs of your child will also be important for the judge to hear about. It will be important to be prepared to tell the court about how your child's relationship with his or her other parent will continue. The court will want to hear about how your child will be able to spend time with that parent, who now has custody or visitation rights, and how those trips to spend time with the other parent will be arranged and paid for. The court may want to hear about your child's preference, depending upon your child's age and level of maturity. But it's important to understand that the court will not base its decision just on your child's preferences. The behavior of the parties, usually the child's mother and father, will be an important factor in the court's decision. The judge will want to know whether either parent has done anything to support or to get in the way of the child's relationship with the other parent and the reasons behind a parent's desire to move to a new location. If you are a victim of domestic violence, you can ask the court to keep your new address confidential and not tell the other party where you plan to move. All you need to do is check a special box on the notice form. Also, if you want to relocate to get away from an abusive relationship, the judge will think about that. Be sure to let the judge know about the parent's abuse against you and your child and any protection from abuse orders, findings of child abuse, or criminal convictions or investigations that resulted from that abuse. Finally, you will have the chance to tell the court any other information that will help the judge to decide what is in the best interest of your child before the judge decides whether you can move with your child. Remember, it's very important that you fill out the necessary paperwork and get the other parent's notice of your plan to move before you leave with your child.
If you don't give the other parents the notice that is required by law, it is still likely that that parent will find out that you have moved. If that happens, the parent can file for custody and you will have to come back to where you used to live and have a hearing in front of the judge. The judge can consider that you left without giving the required notice and may not allow you to leave again with your child. It is also possible that the judge could give the other parent custody and not allow you to have any contact with your child or limit the contact that you're allowed to have. You may have to pay for the other parent's attorney's fees and expenses. And it is possible for the judge to find you in contempt and order some type of punishment, including possible criminal charges. It's always best to talk to an attorney before deciding to leave your home to a new location. Before you move, you will want to make sure that nothing will stand in your way of making a fresh start for yourself and your child.